What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Dustin and last time we set up our our project here so that uh, we can create this game. We gave ourselves a little player here um, and we uh, we imported all of these uh, these sprite sheets here for us to use and we split them all up into individual uh, images. So now what I want to do is I want to give our player uh, some movement so that we can move him around in the world. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new script. So we're going to go into our scripts folder, we're going to right click, and we're going to create a new C Sharp script. Um, I want to call this script player controller. And if we wait for that to compile, um, we can add that script onto our player just by clicking and dragging it onto our player. We highlight our player, you'll see it's got a new component down here called the player controller script. So we can just go ahead and double click that and it will open up in Visual Studio. Uh, I don't have Visual Studio currently open, so it's gonna take a minute for it to load up. So I will be right back. All right, so now that I got Visual Studio loaded up, um, I wanna create a couple of variables up here at the top. Um, the first variable I wanna use is a private rigid body 2D. I'm gonna call this my RB. Um, and then in our start function, I want to set what this rigid body is. So I'm gonna say my RB is equal to get component, and the component I wanna get from the object that this script is attached to is the rigid body 2D. And that with some parentheses and a semicolon. And now it's going to set this variable to whatever rigid body is on the object this script is attached to. Um, and what I am just now realizing is that we never gave our player a rigid body. So I want to go back into Unity really quick. I want to highlight the player. Let's add a new component. And looks like I already have it half typed in here. But if you don't, you can just type in rigid body 2D or just start typing it out and select rigid body 2D. Make sure you do not select the rigid body. That is for 3D games and it's not really going to work very well in uh, this project. So we're just going to select rigid body 2D since we're working in a 2D game. Um, what I want to do on this rigid body is I want to, if we just go ahead and hit play right now, uh, you'll see that our player just kind of falls downward like that. And that's because we, on our rigid body, we have this gravity scale here. Um, and that just puts gravity in the game, applies gravity to uh, the player. And I don't want to do that. So I want to set that to zero. And now if we hit play, you'll see that he just kind of stays in the same place, which is exactly what we want. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to set collision detection to dis uh, from discrete to continuous. Uh, if we set it to discrete, there could be some instances where I don't know if the player is moving too fast or if a collider is too narrow. It's possible that the player can go through that object and we don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to continuous now. And then on constraints down here, I want to go ahead and freeze the rotation on the Z axis. Um, if we don't do this, then our player will start spinning uh, when we walk into something. And I don't want that to happen either. So I'm going to freeze the rotation on the Z axis. And I think that's all that we're going to do here. So if we go back into our player controller script, um, so we have this rigid body uh, set. So now what I want to do is I want to make our player move. So, and then I don't know why that just closed. Um, 
so the way I want to do that is if we go into our update function, actually let's let's make one more variable up here really quick. Um, I'm gonna go right below the rigid body, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say public float speed, and then so what that's gonna do if we go ahead and save our script here. That's going to give us a variable to use uh, called speed. Um, it is a float, which basically can be any number, uh, whether it's a whole number or a decimal, 1.1, 1.2, 5, whatever it is. Um, we could always use int as well, which is specific to whole numbers, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I'm just going to set this to float. And then public, what that does is it allows us to change this variable from anywhere else that is using this script. Um, for instance, in the inspector, if we go ahead and go into our game, let's let this compile for a moment. And if we click player, you'll see on our player controller script, we have this speed variable. We can set this to whatever we want from here. Uh, but I don't really want to use this, uh, public tag here. Um, I want to use private because I don't want to accidentally call this variable from a different script, um, and change it when we don't want to change it. So I'm going to set this to private so that we don't have the ability to do that. Um, but what that's going to do is if we save this now and go back into our editor here, it'll make this speed variable disappear from here and we can't edit it here. And I still want that functionality. So to fix that, right above the variable, I'm going to give it these box brackets here. And inside those brackets, I'm going to say serialize field. And what that's going to do is it's still going to keep this variable private so that we can't uh, if we have once we have other scripts up here that we're using, we can't accidentally call it from a different script. But what it will do is if we save this, since it's a serialized field, we can actually change it here in the inspector, um, just like that. So, and that's what I want to do. So now that we have a speed variable for how fast our player is going to be moving down here in the update function. I just want to say the or my rb dot velocity is equal to a new vector two, and the vector two we want to use is we want to say input dot get axis, and the axis we want to get is horizontal with a capital H. And then we also want to get input dot get axis vertical. Just like that. And what this is setting is this is going to uh, pull from our input settings back here in Unity. If we go to file, project settings, it's saying input dot get axis horizontal and vertical. And these are basically just preset um, axes that we can use in Unity. It'll pull from the left and right buttons for horizontal, as well as the A and D keys. Um, and then for vertical, it will use our up and down arrows and S and W keys. Um, on our keyboard, which is exactly what we're going to use. And then if you're also use if you're also trying to make this with a to use a like an Xbox controller or something, um, it also has uh, all of these axes down here that it'll pull from using a joystick axis. So that's that's really cool. So if we go ahead and close back out of this, um, and Actually, we can just go ahead and save this now. Go back into Unity, wait for it to compile. And 
And if we hit play, we can use our arrow keys and our W, A, S, and D keys. And our player should move around in the scene. Now, he's moving really, really slow. Um, and, 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 and I don't like that. So, what I want to do is, if we get out of play mode, go back and we didn't actually we're not actually utilizing our speed so what's going on here is the reason why it's going so slow is because um those that horizontal and vertical axis they are set to use just the numbers zero and one so our speed right now is basically just set to one um which is just too slow and we can't change it here in the inspector regardless of how high or how low we set this so if we go back in here we can say that our rigid body dot velocity is equal to a new vector 2 um, and then we can multiply that by our speed and then I also want to multiply it by time, oh, multiply by time dot delta time. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, not everybody has the same speed of computers. Some computers are slower, some computers are faster. Um, and instead of just uh, multiplying this by the speed and going off of the frame rate itself, um, this is going to add actual time into it as well. So if we're multiplying it by time dot delta time, it doesn't matter how fast or slower your computer is, it will move at basically the same speed. So now if I go ahead and save that one more time, let it compile, click play, you will see that now our player is not moving any faster. So I'm going to bump this up to, let's say, 20. And it's still not moving very fast. Why is that? Okay, so let's look here. We're doing new vector 2, to input get axis, times speed. Oh, that's why. So I want to, so I put these two within uh, this uh, vector2 uh, line of code here and I don't want it inside of these curly or uh, inside of these brackets here. I actually want all of this I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut all of this out like that and I want to multiply the entire vector2 by speed and time dot delta time, just like that. So if I go ahead and save this, go back into Unity, hopefully I did that right this time. Wait for it to compile and hit play. And now our player is moving really slow. So let's bump this up again to let's say 20. All right, and he's moving a little bit faster. Let's say 50. A little bit faster. Maybe 200. Let's get him to a good speed. That seems nice. I like that. So now, one thing that I'm noticing here is um, it he's starting off slow and quickly moving up to the speed that we want it to, and that's not necessarily what I want. I want it to be a little bit more snappy with the movements. Um, so, and the reason it's doing that here, if I'm going to go ahead and go back into our script, and right below here, I'm going to say debug.log, and what we want to debug is, let's see, my rigid body dot velocity just like that and if I go ahead and save this go back into unity let it compile and hit play 
at play. And you'll see down here in our console, it is giving us two numbers, um, two floats, 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0. So if we move along um, our axes, let's uh, speed this back up to 200, just like that. You'll see that um, these numbers are moving up to those numbers. And it's basically just gradually setting those numbers to where we want them to be. And that's not quite what we want. So what we want to do in here is we want to change this get access to get access raw. And I want to do that to both of these inputs here. Just like that. And what that's going to do is if we go save it, go back into Unity, let it compile, hit play, and if we look down here again, um, so, oh, another thing, if we're in play mode and we change something in, like, the inspector here, uh, once we go out of play mode, it's going to change it right back to what it was. Um, so anytime you change something in play mode, just remember to set it to wherever you ended up wanting it at. So I'm going to exit play mode, set that back to 200 so we don't have to keep on changing it, and then go back into play mode. So now if we look at these numbers, you'll see that when we hit our arrow keys, they pretty much just snap directly to where we want them to go. So now our player is moving a little bit more more snappy, I guess. So, and that is exactly what we want it to do. So, I think that's going to be all we're going to be doing for this video here. Uh, if you're enjoying the series so far, please make sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, if you have any ways to do this any better, if you have different ways you want to, uh, we, we could do this, or if you have any ideas on what we can add into the game, please make sure to put them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer any questions or implement anything that you want to see. But for now, I will see you later.